In this video, I'm going to build a website from start to finish using the exact same process I used to build my own portfolio and every website I've ever designed. Today's challenge is simple. I'm going to be rebuilding my website designspo.co completely from the ground up. Because when I launched, I just did web design case studies, and now I have an entire design community where you can post your work and get feedback, watch courses, expert interviews, download swipe files, and a whole lot more. That's a lot of stuff to pack into a website. And that's really what makes web design so difficult. You might have a lot of thoughts about what you'd like on your website, but unless you can turn those thoughts into a website, designing one is impossible. So if we're going to build a beautiful website, we need a plan. More specifically, a blueprint you can follow to turn the ideas in your head into a website super easily. And that process starts with goals. You see, every website has a goal. It could be to raise awareness, sign up users, or attract customers. Goals are important because they determine things like the kind of language you use on your website, whether you want it to look quirky or professional, and even the software you end up using. For example, if your goal is to sell products direct to consumer, you might want to use Shopify. But if your goal is to sell services like landscaping, you would definitely want to make scheduling easy. And I'm sure you have more than one goal. My goals for the Design Spo website are to create a compelling sales flow for new visitors, rank high on search for terms like design community, sign up users from the homepage, and connect with visitors through live chat. Now, as a beginner, the second I wrote my goals down, I wanted to start designing. But that actually turns out to be a huge mistake. That's because we don't have a system in place for structuring our website. Trying to build a website without that structure just leads to frustration and failure, and it's one of the main reasons people procrastinate on building their website. So we need to structure our website using a system that's designed to meet our goals. Introducing the spec sheet. The spec sheet is basically a list of requirements we'll need to build our website and meet our goals. So for rebuilding Design Spell, I'll want a video walkthrough of the community, as well as testimonials from members and a bunch of other features. If you build software, you probably want a demo, and if you're in professional services, you probably want a contact form. Basically, we're creating a list of everything we'd want on our website. From there, we can figure out what software we need to use and what sections we need to have. This makes building a website 10 times easier because we know exactly what we need to build before we have to do the hard work of actually developing the site. So I'm going to go through each goal that I've set and write down everything I'll need to reach those goals. Next, we need a way to turn our spec sheet into a blueprint for our website because right now our spec sheet is basically a wish list. So how do we turn this wish list into a roadmap that we can actually use to build a beautiful website? By converting our spec sheet into website sections. Every website I design follows this formula. First, I ask a client what their goals are, then we get clear on what we'll need to reach those goals, and then I take that spec sheet and turn it into sections on their new website. So on my Design Spo spec sheet, I wrote that I wanted a video walkthrough of the new Design Spo and a headline with a strong value proposition. I can combine those items into the first section on my website. So when I sit down to design, I know exactly what I'm doing. I also want a section for every feature of Design Spo. So I'll have a section for courses, case studies, feedback, community, swipe files, and everything else. This is why the spec sheet is so important. It can feel like we're wasting time doing things that aren't exactly design related, but really it's gonna make designing the whole website so much easier because we know exactly what we want and we won't have to waste hours changing things around later. Our next job is to turn those section descriptions into outlines for our website. This is the hardest part of the design process. There's nothing worse than staring at a blank canvas. So we're not gonna stare at a blank canvas. The best artists and marketers keep swipe files, which are collections of designs and ads that inspire them and that they can model for their own work. We're gonna do the same thing by finding websites that we love and modeling aspects of them for our own design. For example, I love this section on cycle.app, so I'll probably build something similar for a design spell. Now, I'm not going to copy it directly, obviously, but I'll keep the general layout and change the typography, sizing, spacing, and remove the scrolling animation. Building up a swipe file is essential when designing a website. I have a folder with literally hundreds of designs that I can reference at any time. So I'm going to go through section by section, finding a few different designs that I love and make them my own. There are a few different resources that you can use to find design inspiration. First, of course, I'd recommend the Design Spo website case studies, where we do an in-depth analysis of the best design websites on the internet. You can also check out lapa.ninja for a quick glance at a ton of great websites. And of course, designers on Twitter are always posting new and interesting designs that you can draw inspiration from. You see, all the work we've done so far is to mitigate blank page syndrome. We procrastinate for so long because we hate staring at that blank page. It reminds us that we don't have a website that can be so beneficial to our business, and we feel like we don't have the resources to build it. We've built a structure, we've gathered inspiration, so now we're finally ready to attack that blank page by building a wireframe. 
a wireframe is essentially a super low fidelity version of our website. And I really mean low fidelity. Most wireframes I build are literally sketches in a notebook with some boxes for graphics and some squiggles for text. The reason we start with basic sketches is that they're super easy to change. If you have a good idea in your head, but it doesn't work on paper, you know now instead of when you're actually building the website. We can use, modify, and model the design inspiration we gathered and combine it with our website structure to create our first wireframe. So that's exactly what I'll do for Design Spot. I love Framer.com's hero section, which is the first section of a website, but I'd love to add some company logos of designers who love Design Spo, probably some more subtitle text, two buttons instead of one, and my own video walkthrough. The reason we got design inspiration is because it makes wireframing much easier. I'm gonna go through each section of my structure sheet and sketch out different ideas for them based on the design inspiration that I gathered. But how do you turn these rough sketches into a beautiful design? That's something I struggled with for a long time because, you know, I had these great ideas, I was able to sketch them out, but I couldn't turn them into real live websites. I assumed I just wasn't creative. But as it turns out, the secret to amazing design is actually to create a set of rules for every component on your website that you can then fit together like Lego pieces. This is called a design system and it's what separates amateur and messy looking websites from a professional. So we're going to create rules for our typography, our colors, layout, spacing, and every part of our design. Then we can take this design system and plug it into our wireframe so the whole process of designing actually becomes easy and even enjoyable. A design system does not have to be complicated. Even a few simple rules will go a long way. So I'm gonna share the rules I came up with for Design Spell. The first and most important rule is called the four pixel rule. It basically says that no matter what you're working on, typography, buttons, containers, or sections, everything should be divisible by four pixels. This simple rule is gonna make building the rest of our design system a lot easier, and it's gonna make every part of your design and look clean, consistent, and professional. To create the rest of the design system, I'm gonna load up a software called Figma, which is the best design software on the market right now because it's super easy to use and also free. Now, we wanna start with the elements that visitors commit the most visual attention to, which is our typography. I'm gonna pick out a font that I love, which is called Bricolage Grotesque, and then I'm gonna start with my main headline and just test out different font sizes that are divisible by four until I find something that I like. I don't want something too huge, so I'm gonna go with 56 pixels. And now, every time I use this big headline, which in website lingo is called the H1, I'm going to use this exact size. Then I'm going to design the rest of my headings, a subtitle, some button text, and some label text. Each time getting smaller and smaller, and remembering that I've created a rule to use the exact same sizes everywhere in my design. A great way to test if your design is working is to just create a few mock-up sections really quickly. So this is what an H2, a subtitle, and a paragraph look like together. I like how that looks, so I'm gonna save this typography system. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for color. So I'm gonna use a color palette from the Design Spo newsletter, but you can also check out Real Time Colors, which is a great color picker for the web, or Coolers, which is kind of a random color generator. Next, we wanted to find some rules for spacing and layout. This is going to make our design look really clean and consistent. For my website, I'm just going to set a max width of 1200 pixels and a gutter width of 32 pixels. And gutter is the spacing between columns in your design. Setting a rigid max width and gutter actually makes your design responsive at different screen sizes. So the design won't stretch to the absolute edge on a large desktop, and it still has some nice padding on tablet and mobile screens. I can also set rules for the number of columns I'll use at different screen sizes. So on desktop, I I want to use 12 columns because it's a very divisible number. I can have a two column, three column, four column, or six column layout, and everything will still be evenly spaced. On tablet, I'll choose a six column layout, and on mobile, it's best to stick to just one. So now that we've created this set of rules, we don't have to build our website from the ground up. We basically have a set of Lego pieces that we can plug into any new design we want to create. And because we've done all this heavy lifting, the actual design process is pretty easy. All we have to do is take our design system and map it onto the wireframe we created earlier to build our first real version of the website. And this is called mid fidelity because we're not coding a website yet. We're still building a mock-up in Figma, but this design will look almost exactly like how we want our final website to look. I used to skip this step, but it is by far the most important part of the process. It might take a few extra hours to create this design, but it's going to make building the final website really easy. And if we want to change anything, it's much easier to do that in a mock-up than it is on a live website because we want to make building the final version of the website as easy as possible. And the best way to do that is to take some extra time and really nail down a good mock-up. This is also the time where we write the copy for the website, because when it comes to designing websites, you don't have clarity until you have copy. So I'm back at Figma, and I'm literally just going to take my wireframe and turn it into a mock-up using my design system. So for the first section of my website, I'm going to start by putting my logo in the same spot that I had in the wireframe. Then I'm going to do the same thing for each menu item, and because I created a typography system, I can just drag and drop my text into here and change the words to fit what I wrote down in my structure sheets. Now because I built a lightweight design system, 
I don't have specific rules for the spacing here, but that's not a problem because remember I have a general rule that says everything should be divisible by four pixels. So I can play around with different numbers here for the spacing as long as it's divisible by four pixels. I like 12 pixels, so I'll stick with that. I can repeat this process for everything else on my website, which I might wanna add later, and just remember to follow the same rules that I set so everything is clean and consistent. Next, I'm gonna add in those company logos. Underneath that, I'll put in my headline and write the copy for that. Underneath that, I'll put in a subtitle followed by two buttons. Now I only have color and typography rules for these buttons, so I'll take a minute to define their padding, again, following the four pixel rule. Underneath that, I'll place a video and that's the first section done. Now I'm gonna repeat that process for every single section of my wireframe until I have the full design. So now it's time to take all the prep work that we've done and finally build our website. Now there are three things we're gonna need to build a website, a domain name, hosting, and code. You can think about these three parts like building a house. Your domain name is your address. It's your location on the internet. Hosting is like land. It's buying a server where your website goes. And like land, the more you buy, the bigger the property you can build. And the code is like the house. You get to choose the structure, the design, how many rooms or pages you have, and what each one of those pages looks like. Now, don't let this overwhelm you. There are a lot of no-code tools out there that will help you set up a domain name, hosting, and building, so you never have to touch a line of code. We're going to look at two no-code tools here with different levels of ease and customization. The first is Webflow. On Webflow, you can get the domain name, hosting, and no-code design tools all in one package for one price. They have an amazing and intuitive editor that you could think of like drag and drop code. The upside is that everything works out of the box, but the trade-off is a lack of customization. There are a lot of things that Webflow doesn't natively support. You can't create a business email, take payments in other currencies, or schedule appointments. If you want custom features, you have to install third-party apps, and I can tell you from experience that will require code. Our other option is WordPress, which powers around 40% of the websites on the internet. At its core, WordPress is super simple, but highly customizable. If there's a feature you want on your website, there's probably a plugin for it that's already running on thousands of other websites. If you want to get a domain name, hosting, and one-click WordPress installation, I'd recommend Hostinger. They're not sponsored, but I love them, and I've been building websites with them for years. They give you a business email, it's cheaper than Webflow, and you have a lot more room to customize your website. The downside is there's a higher learning curve. Unlike Webflow, Hostinger lets you manage the back end of your website, which is really cool, but it's a lot more complicated. So since my current website uses Hostinger and WordPress, that's what I'm gonna go with. Now, to turn WordPress into a great drag and drop website builder, I'm gonna install a plugin called Elementor. They run over 12 million websites on the web, and in my opinion, they're the best website builder that I've ever used. When I install Elementor and load up my page, I'm greeted with this editor. I can create containers where I can add in text, images, videos, menus, and basically anything else that I could think of. If there's something that Elementor doesn't offer, there are literally hundreds of extension plugins that work with their no-code builder. So I can integrate lots of third-party apps without having to code. And now because Elementor is so big, there are literally thousands of amazing tutorials already on YouTube and great channels with resources for beginners, which I'll put in the description below. What I'm gonna do is walk you through turning my design that I made yesterday in Figma into a live website. So I'll start by creating a section at the top for my logo and menu and two containers inside of that, which will go side by side. I'm just gonna put in my logo on the left and adjust the size so it's not huge. And then add in my menu on the right and customize it using the exact same rules that I created in my design system. Then I'm gonna add in my login and sign up buttons and set the right text size, fix up the typography and the button padding. And it's here that you can add in a few extra touches not in the original mid fidelity mockup. This is full fidelity so we can add in some flair like a subtle white gradient on my sign up button, a drop shadow that goes away on hover, and how about a page background of tiny repeat dots. Next, I'm going to add in our headline and subtitle and copy over the same stylings I used in Figma. Then add in our buttons and finally the video walkthrough of the design community. I also want to add in a pointer here that's sort of floating around in space and I do that by setting the position to absolute and then adjusting it as necessary. You don't want to do this for most things on your website because it doesn't adapt well to different screen sizes, but a few flourishes here and there can give your website a lot of personality. So now I'm going to repeat this process for every section of my design. So there you go. I built a website from start to finish using the exact same process I use for all my clients. So if you want to check out the final version of the website, it'll be the first link in the description below. And if you want to get in-depth feedback from me on your design so you can take it to the next level, then sign up for our private design community. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.